Okay. Hello, my friends. So yesterday we built a driving question board in class. And our first focus question is, what do arts rock layers reveal? So that's what we're going to start looking into today. Okay. We're going to take a journey through the Grand Canyon to observe the rock in the canyon. So let's hope I can get to what I need to get to. Hold on just a minute, my friends, okay? Share. Go to this. Okay, so I'm hoping this comes out right. If it does not, I've made a PowerPoint video, I mean a PowerPoint uh, for my virtual students. It has 20 slides in it. I believe on either slide one or slide two, there's a link to a video. It's called Over the Rim Into the Canyon. You need to play that video. It's very short, 58 seconds. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play it now. I don't know if you can see it. I'm not sure how Zoom is being with the share screen feature, but you'll get to hear it for the next 58 seconds. Or not hear it because it's no sound. When you're watching the video, look for the layers in the rock. Look how the edges of the rock from one layer to the next look. Look how the rock crumbles. Crumbles differently between each layer. You can see different colors. That's what I mean by layers. Layers are stripes or colors. At the 47 second mark, you can see different canyons in the background. And on those different canyons, you'll see the layers look different than the canyons we've been looking at closer to us. Okay. See the layers, guys? And back there, you can actually see some foliage. Even though this is a helicopter flyover, you can actually see foliage from high up. Foliage meaning greenery. Right here, you can see shadows of foliage. Okay, back here you can really see a lot of different layers. Okay, so what all did you notice in the video? So did you see stripes in the rock walls? We're going to investigate specifically those stripes because another word for stripes is layers. We're going to find out what those rock layers reveal. There are things in those stripes, in those layers. Okay. So we're going to identify layers of the Grand Canyon. Um, yeah, let's see. You have a picture 
that you're working with. It looks like that. I put that in your slideshow with your finger on the slideshow part. I want you to trace out at least five different layers that ultimately, if you were in my classroom, we would be identifying layers A through F with A being at the top and F being at the bottom. So actually it would be A, B, C, D, E, F, six layers. Okay, so while it says identify at least four, you really need to identify six. Okay, I know it says four, but so it did get confusing. Honestly, identify six and go in your notebook. And I'm going to take a picture of one after school and post it on Class Dojo. Go in your logbook, page seven. You're going to, with a colored pencil, trace over your different layers with a colored pencil. So one layer you could trace in red, and one layer you could trace in orange, one layer you could trace in yellow, one layer you could trace in green. Just choose six different colors and trace out your different layers. We're not making up layers, but you can tell even in your black and white where one layer ends and the next one begins okay the bottom layer you're going to label layer f the top layer is label a so a b c d e f the top is a the bottom is f okay so you're going to divide this up i know it says four but Actually save yourself work and go ahead and label it out A through F. So that's six layers, okay? And I'll correct that in the PowerPoint in a few minutes, okay? Um, geologists, which are people who study the Earth's surface, refer to the big stripes in Earth's surface as rock layers. Um, if we didn't have COVID precautions, we'd be doing this as a partnered activity. We do have precautions, so we do this individually now. Um, do your best with it. Like I said, I'm going to take a picture of the one that we do together as a class and put that on probably dojo after school. Okay. Next activity we're going to do is what takes up the bulk of the slides on your PowerPoint. It takes up a bunch of slots because it's a bunch of pages in my notebook and the teacher notebook. See, it's kind of thick. See all those things that are marked? That's all the pages of this next part. This is interpreting patterns and in fossil evidence. Okay, I'm going to go to the PowerPoint. Um, let me see if I can find it. Give me just a second, guys, okay? Not this one. Uh, lesson three. Okay, so if this is working like I want it to be working, you should be looking at slide four in lesson three in the slideshow. Scientists have studied the rock layers of Grand Canyon and found fossils. Layer F, the bottom layer, has no fossils. It's the only layer with no fossils. So you should already have all of, let me go back to, I zoom meet. Zoom, 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 zoom. Uh, do, 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 do. Stop share. Stop share.
Return to meeting. Yes, return to meeting. Return to meeting. It'd be great if I could get that return to meeting part. Okie dokie then. Okay, so you should already have your rock layers traced out on page seven. If you don't, stop my Zoom video now so you can get these rock layers traced out on layer seven. Oh, I'm sorry, on page seven. Label them A through F. So you're going to label your A layer, the one that's at the very top, which looks in your picture like it's black. Your next layer should look almost white and so on. So you go down, 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 down. Okay, so you're starting in layer A, then B, then C, then D, then E, then F. You should label out six different layers. Okay, then you turn your page to page eight. That's where you're going to find a page that looks just like the one you see on slide number four. Okay, so you should be on your logbook, page eight, so that you see this. Okay, you're going to label this first column F E D, just like I did. We know from looking at the evidence I'm going to show you in this slide, layer F has no fossils, does not contain any fossils. So you go up here, fossils present, none. What type of environment do you think the fossilized organisms lived in? Let's go back here. Made up of rocks formed by volcanic activity. Let's go back over here. Unknown environment, maybe volcanoes. Provide evidence. There are no fossils in the layer. Volcanic activity formed the rocks in this layer. We know this because we read that. That's where those answers came from. I hope everybody understands that. I read this little bit of information to fill in those blanks, okay? This chart is asking you to go through a lot of information to complete this chart on pages eight and nine. And this chart is worth 30 points, plus the six points of the labeling the layers on the preceding page. So in other words, Wednesday's grade is 36 points. That's a big grade, a very big grade, because Tuesday's grade was 10 points. Monday's grade was 11 points. Okay, the quiz you're going to have Friday is only five points. This is going to take up all your time, almost all your time today, filling this out. It involves a lot of reading to find your answers, a lot of little pieces of reading to find your answers. So to find out about layer E, we're going to go over here. Slide six, layer E. Fossils, trilobites, brachiopods, and worms. So you go back to here and you write trilobites, brachiopods, and worms. How do you spell it? You go back over here and you copy the spelling. Please don't misspell it. When your words are spelled right here for you, it should be spelled correctly. And you put these words right here. What type of environment do you think the fossilized organisms lived in? So we go back over here. Trilobites lived in deep ocean. Um, let's find out about brachiopods. Brachiopods um, near the shore and shallow ocean and have a hard shell. Worms um, were in the ocean floor all around the world. So that's the pieces of information you need to fill in. This. Okay. All those pieces of information, because you're writing about three different organisms, trilobites, brachiopods, and worms. So you're going to write about where trilobites lived, 
where brachiopods lived and where worms lived. Provide evidence to support your thinking. Why do you think they live there? Tell me what you found here. Tell me what you found here. Okay? You're pulling your evidence from the text. And thankfully, it's not long text, okay? Then you're going to go to layer D in your chart. It's brachiopods, bryzoans, corals, and mollusks. I'm going through and reading some of these words for you because they're hard to pronounce. Brachiopods, bryzoans, corals, and mollusks. And you go through and you answer the prompts in each column. So you're going to tell me where brachiopods lived, where bryzoans lived, where corals lived, and where mollusks lived. Then you're going to give me evidence that supports your thinking of why they lived in that environment. Okay? That talks about brachiopods. This talks about bryzoans. This talks about corals. This talks about mollusks. Okay. Now we're at layer C. So you'll be on page 10 in your notebook now. Okay. So layer 10, layer C, page 10, you have cone bearing plants. And yes, you need to write all that out cone hyphen bearing plants, ferns, winged insects, and fossilized tracks of mammal-like reptiles and millipedes. Yes, I understand that's a lot of words. Make it fit. Kids last year did it. Nobody's hands fell off. Okay, this is how we learn. And then you tell me about the environment that those cone-bearing plants lived in. You tell me about the environment that the ferns lived in. You tell me about the environment that the winged insects lived in. You tell me about the environment that the um, trace evidence of the reptile fossil tracks, what their environment was. Tell me about the environment for the millipedes. Okay. Then you go on down to your next uh, row in your table on page 10, layer B. And you're going to tell me about the brachiopods, the bryzoans, the corals, the crinoids, and the sponges. You're going to tell me about the environment that the bra brachiopods were in, the environment that the Bryzoans were in, the environment the corals were in, the environment that the crinoids, otherwise known as sea lilies, were in, and the environment that the sponges were in. Are we talking about fresh water? Are we talking about salt water? What kind of environment? And then tell us, how do you know that? What's your evidence? Okay. Then finally, we're at layer A, which would be at the top of the Grand Canyon, okay, because we're working backwards. F is at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. A would be at the top of the Grand Canyon. So layer A has conifers, disonodonts, calamites, hybodont sharks, and lungfish. And you're going to tell me about the environment that the conifers lived in? The disonodonts lived in, the calamites lived in, the hibonodont sharks lived in, and the lungfish lived in. Okay, all of those, those organisms lived in a certain type of environment. Tell me what that said about the environment, the fact that all of those organisms were found in that one layer, okay? And then provide evidence to support your thinking. This 
is just um, a reference. So it's telling you, you don't use this to fill out your table at all. This is telling you that layer A, which is the newest layer, is the Kaibab formation. That's what it's called. And it dates to a period of what they say is 270 million years old. Layer B, they call the Toro Week formation. They say that is 273 million years old. Layer C, they call the Coconino Sandstone Hermit Formation. And they say that is 275 million years old. And the Hermit Formation, which is at the bottom of that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, at yeah, the bottom of it, Hermit Formation is between 315 and 280 million years old. You go down another layer to layer D, the Supai group. 315 million years old to 280 million years old. If you go down some more, the red wall limestone, 200, 340 million years old. You go down almost to the bottom of the, of the Grand Canyon. That's called the Tonto Group, and that's a group of um, layers of colors. That is the Cambrian period. So that's going way back in age to 505 to 525 million years ago. And the F layer, the very bottom layer, is the Grand Canyon Supergroup and the Vishnu, sorry, Vishnu Schist Group, which goes all the way from 740 million years old all the way back to 1840 million years old so it goes back a couple years okay it's just given us a rough timeline for how old those grand canyon layers are now let me give you a caveat here different religions believe our earth to be different ages also scientists keep finding different pieces of evidence that indicate that our earth is different ages from other pieces of evidence so not everybody agrees with these ages that are given right here okay um this is the ages that fourth grade standards want us to agree upon but just understand that not everybody agrees upon these ages okay now, um, your table should be complete. I understand that you're going to have to hit pause so you can finish your table. All your answers are in your slides um, 5 through 19. I'm going to post pictures of completed pages 9 and 10 after school today because I don't want my students from um, any virtual group say block one getting the answers and then block two getting them before they even come to class kind of thing I want everybody to try to think this out on their own first because this directly leads into the conceptual checkpoint that we have Friday so I'd rather you have a little bit of struggle with figuring out your answers so you can understand the concepts behind it because once you get the concepts behind it you'll do just fine on the quiz or you should do just fine okay so we would normally divide up our class and students would uh, research one group one, one layer each but we can't do that with virtual and also with um, our COVID precautions okay so our last thing is our fun activity and this is the one that requires either uh, play-doh or modeling clay this one is where I send you to slide number 20 create a rock layer model so if you have modeling clay that's the recommended medium because it's harder and it will hold the imprints better play-doh is softer so you could accidentally press the the thing that you're printing that you're imprinting too hard so if that's the case just roll it out a second time 
Sometimes it takes more than once to get it done right. So if you only want to make one layer of rock, that's fine. You only need one color. If you want to make more than one layer, you'll need more than one color of modeling clay or Play-Doh. What you'll do is whichever you choose, modeling clay or Play-Doh, you're going to roll it out flat. Um, my husband did this for me while I was getting everything set up for today's lab between setting up for lab, doing the PowerPoint, doing this video, grading everybody's notebooks today. I've not been working on science since 8 a.m. It's now 11 p.m. and I'm still going. So that tells you how much prep and work goes into a single day's science lesson. It's a lot of hours. It's just for the teacher. It's a lot of prep time on it. Okay. So sometimes Mr. Craig helps out and getting things ready. What he did to get the modeling clay ready was he put it on a plastic um, uh, cutting board. That way it can be cleaned really well. And he used a rolling pin to roll it out really flat. You could also use anything that's round and hard to roll out the modeling clay. Modeling clay tends to be very stiff. Um, Play-Doh is really easy. You could just use your hands to push it out flat. Um, you kind of need it kind of square because you want to make it like rock layers. Roll it out till it's flat and it's relatively thin. And then you're going to want to gather things from either outside or little, those little plastic toys like little sharks, little dolphins, little bitty animals, you know, the ones that come in the little tubes. If, excuse me, if you have a smaller sibling, they might have the little tubes with the little bitty animals in it, or maybe you do from when you're younger, or do what I did. I went outside and I have palmetto leaves here, saw palmetto. We cut some of those off and then those make great impressions because they're very hard. So they can be used for impressions and they can be reused because they are very stiff. I gathered up acorns. I gathered up oak leaves. I gathered up um, those little sugar gum balls. Those all make wonderful impressions. And those can all represent a forested land. So a land very much like what we have down here in the South because the piece of land I live on represents our environment very well. Um, so tomorrow my students, the ones that I assign a forested piece of land, they'll use those items to make imprints to represent fossils of the kind of land that we live on now. Um, Miss Tran is letting me use uh, some items that she had as tubes of animals that she had trying to figure out how to get back out of share mode um, so that students can have some ocean bearing animals or ocean living animals so that we can have some things that represent the ocean just so we can have some some difference um, there's different items you can use for your impressions to represent different environments if you have small shells seashells such as what you would find at the lake or the ocean, that would make something great to represent an ocean layer. Um, I want to show you my Nautilus because I have a ammonite, this opalized that I bought a couple years ago on the auction block. If I could get my Zoom meeting back, it's not coming up. 